AI and LLM don't have to be complicated. Let's discover OpenWeb UI, a free open source platform to create your custom advanced AI models with the LLMs of your choice. What makes it unique is its community-based approach, providing ready-to-use models and tools you can learn from or use as a starting point for your specific needs. To start using it, you can follow the quick start guide from their documentation for an even simpler installation process. You can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy it seamlessly on on your server or the cloud provider of your choice, we handle the installation, backups, updates, and ongoing maintenance. So you can focus on building and scaling your project without any hassle. To start using OpenWeb UI with our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, type OpenWeb UI and select, choose between the different cloud providers, regions and service plans based on your need and then next. You can adjust more advanced settings here, choose between different levels of support. I will keep the free included one by default. And once everything is ready, hit the create service button. Once the installation is finished, you will receive this email to notify you. There are some instructions to help you getting started, but it is what we will do together. So no worries and follow the click here to get the password link. We arrive on Elestio administration dashboard of your open web UI instance. Copy the password in your clipboard with this button and follow the admin UI link. We arrive on the login page, enter your email and paste the password and then sign in. The first time we arrive, we have this nice change log. For the first time, it's not very useful, but over the time to see new features coming, it's very pleasant. And it show you how active it is because I guess we are 25 and the latest are just five days ago. Let's validate it. And let's have a look at open web UI interface. If we do nothing, we have an interface similar to ChatGPT, but much more advanced and including way more features that we will see together. The only thing is it's not directly out of the box ready because we need first to select a model and we don't have one installed, but it is very simple to do. So let's do it together. We go on the bottom left, you can have the settings, but there are the normal settings for the interface. And what we want is the administration settings. So go to admin panel. OK, I arrive in users. We'll see it later. First, we want our model. So go to settings, head to the model section. And on the top right, you can manage your models and install different ones. Our instance is configured to work with all AMA type models. So you can see we already have it connected and it's knowing how to use it. And we need to pull a model from olama.com. So follow this link to see the list of models. And from there, you can choose the models you want based on your needs. You can even filter them between embedding, visions and tools model. So let's take the well-known DeepSeek R1 for a faster download time. Maybe we can take the 1.5 billion parameters which reduced drastically the size. And then we need to copy its name back to open web UI, paste it and click on the download button. And it will take care of the installation for you. The network is very fast between the server and Olama. So one gigabyte lasted just a few seconds. All right, to be able to compare different results between models, let's take another one. This one is good, but way too big for this demo. Let's take Llama 3.2. For this one, the 3 billion parameters should be fine. Let's copy its name, same process, paste it, click on download. You can see it's downloading it very quickly. Okay, we can see on the top right that it's good, but there's not an auto refresh here. So you have to do command R or reload. And here they are, we have DeepSeek and Llama. You can decide to enable or disable some of them. All right, so now let's try to use them. We can go on new chat and it will select one of the two models. Let's start by deep sync and try one of the things here. Give me ideas for what to do with my kids art. Okay, and the prompt is what are five creative things I could do with my kids art. I don't want to throw them away, but it does so, so much clutter. Very nice prompt, send me see. 
DeepSync is working differently from other models. So right now we can see it is in thinking process. All right, so it finished generating the answer. And what it did is first it thought for 20 seconds and then it generated the answer. So here is the final output of the answer. Here I five creative activities you could do with your kids. So one, demonstrate your art taking skills create a creative art challenge. I'm not an art professional or a kids educator, so I don't know how relevant it is. But what is interesting is to see how DeepSeek is generating this answer. It's not just outputting this, but you can expand the thought. And for this model, it's explaining the thinking process. So what it got after our prompt is, okay, the users wants me to think about five creating things they can do and so on. So you can see it's thinking. And after it has done this for 20 seconds, so for this, I guess the speed is based on how powerful your instance is, how complicated is the model you use, then it generates the final output. Then the rest of the interface is kind of classic. You can edit it if for any reason you need to. Then you can copy, play the audio of it, uh, see what was used to generate it, the numbers of token, the time it took, decide if it's a good or bad response to help the model to improve, a button to generate more, and a button to regenerate if it was wrong. But most of the time when it's wrong, the prompt is wrong. So let's try another model to see how they perform, even with different prompts. But let's do it in a new chat so we have other um, suggestions so llama and overcome procrastination give me tips could you start by asking me about instances when i procrastinate the most and then give me some suggestions to overcome it interesting let's try it all right so it told me i'd be happy to help you identify patterns of procrastination and some questions what are the types of tasks it's asking questions because the prompt asked first to ask questions. What is different here is that the generation doesn't have a thinking process. It's directly their response to our prompt, which is more a traditional approach for LLM. Another nice feature there is, is here the code interpreter. So maybe we can try it. So execute code for analysis. Let's write our code. So JS, it's a markdown syntax to help it understand we are talking about JavaScript code. Let's say a loop for let i equals zero, i below 10, we increment i, and we will just console log it. A number and the i, and we say, okay, it's only this that represent our code. Let's try it. As we used the markdown syntax, it probably wrap it in a code element knowing it's JS. And I'm getting an error. So maybe this model is a bit big for the VM I chose. So I will try it again with the other model. All right, let's run it. All right, with DeepSeek, it seems it works, but for a weird reason, it detected it as a Python, but the output is correct, but it rewrote it in Python language. So maybe that's not the best model to use for code analysis. What makes Open Web UI really unique? It's the fact that you can choose different models and are not linked to only one specific model. It's free, it's open source, but you can also do more. You have a knowledge base where you can upload, for example, files. Let's name it rules. What you are trying to achieve rules for quality support, let's make it public. We create our knowledge base and then inside we can add different files to create a collection of files that our LLM will browse into to provide us better answers inside our chat conversations. But this feature is the top of the iceberg because Open Web UI has much more. They also provide tools and functions. If we look at the documentation, at the explanation of what it is, it's pretty straightforward, especially if we look at the too long didn't read. So we have tools that extend the abilities of LLMs, allowing them to collect real world, real time data like weather, stock prices and so on. Basically, it is scripts that can perform requests to grab things from the outside world. 
Then we have functions to extend the capabilities of the open web UI itself. So to do more from what is available out of the box. And as it is by nature open source, you can also do it if you dive into the code and pipelines for more advanced users who want to transform open web UI features into API compatible workflow, mainly for offloading heavy processing. All right, so all of those you can create yourself, but what is great is open web UI is community based. If we go to openwebui.com and I recommend you to create an account, you have access to some models that you can import directly into your open web UI instance or locally if you run it locally. Functions on the top, you can see a few of them different tools and some of the models are using tools and so on everything can be connected together let's try one of them for example mental health assistant we can see the creator how many times it has been downloaded and the details about it but we won't copy paste it manually instead what we will do is click on get and click on download as a json export unless you are running locally you can use the import web UI. Once you have downloaded it, go to models or tools if you downloaded a tool and click on import the thing you want to import. Pick the file and open. Perfect. Now we can see we have the icon of what we downloaded mental health assistance. We can start by editing it because we are not having the model it's using. So here we have our different Llama and DeepSync. Let's take Llama 3.2 and you can use it as a starting point for anything else. You don't have to keep it as is, but you have all the details of how it works with the system prompt, some structure, some examples. You can fine tune it to what you need and also some prompt suggestions. So it's what we have when we create a new chat. We've seen that we have knowledge base we can create. You can also attach one of them, for example, the roots ones, but currently it's empty, so no use to do that. Some models even allow you to generate images so you can add the vision capabilities if you want. And let's do save and update and try it. Okay, update it successfully. If we click there, okay, it's a new chat with it. We have the suggestion. So I've been having trouble sleeping because of stress. Yeah, it's, it's me, so let's do it and run it. All right, so it's replying to me. Hey there, it sounds like you are dealing with some stress, mindfulness meditation, deep breathing exercises. I'm no one to say if it's a good answer or not, but it's awesome that it's able to create a model that targets specific needs that you can use or create yours based on them or even from scratch. Of course, browse the library to see all the exciting models and tools you can find. If you are using it with your team or in a business use case, you can go to the admin panel again, invite your team members users. And what is great is you can even create groups and within group, you can define different permissions, for example, to give access to specific models or not. If you click on edit, you can choose which groups has access to it or not. As always, have a look at the documentation to discover features I didn't cover or if you need help to get started using this software. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Open Web UI with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.